Hey folks, in this episode of the podcast, it's all about 360. I get to sit down with my friend Mark Charette to talk it through. This is Twitter. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. Today, I've got a longtime friend of mine, Mr. Mark Charette from Down Under. He's joining the show to bring us up to speed on the current state of the art of 360 video and photo. Mark Charette, welcome to the show, man. How are you doing? Very good. Good to see you again. It's good to see you as well. It's good to see you. You know what? I think you should absolutely do your podcast sort of... Mm. Uh, persona, it should be done with 360, right? You should be able to just walk around the room and I should just be able to follow you around in 360. That, how come? How come you're in this 2D world? I know. it's. It would be, I think it just would be too scary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all technology see, is scary right? in the beginning. It, it, it's an interesting place for us to start because it's one of those things that I often get asked is, um, you know, when shooting at 360s, can you make sure you get this or that part of the scene? And I go, yeah, but then where do we hide the crew? And I just wait for the answer. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, the crew has to leave the room. Well, let's let's start right. there. Let's you know, most of the folks, well, all of the folks in the TWIP community know who you are. Folks outside of the community may not be familiar with Mark Charette. So give us give us the Mark Charette elevator pitch, and then we'll dive in. Great. Yeah, I'm a, a virtual tour photographer, Google Street View trusted photographer, and I specialize in creating virtual tours uh, for commercial properties um, on Google Maps and Street View, and then add augmented reality layering on top of that. For and basically, it's a it's a marketing product, um, but it, it it's basically 360 photography is the vast vast majority of what I do. But I have other parts of my businesses, which is all driven to helping businesses actually get found online. That's yeah. primarily what I do. So you're doing this, you know, most of us are just experimenting with 360 video. Like, as you know, I bought that Insta360 uh, One X2. I've got the little yep. Insta360 Go. And before that, I think I had the Theta, the Rico Theta. So, and I'm, yep. you know, all the stuff I'm doing is just experimental playing. Hey, that's kind of cool. You're doing the real deal. You're doing client facing billable work with this stuff. So I, how does what you're doing and the tools that you use differ than what these, the average Joe or the average Fred would use? Yeah, the average person would probably be using a, uh, one of the cameras. In fact, I'll just lean back very quickly here. And grab a 360 camera, just like yeah. this one over here, which is, in mm -hmm. fact, this is the Theta V. And I actually use this now as a proof of concept, which is really where I feel this kind of quality uh, resides. It's a good quality camera for those types of situations where either the you're really tight for space, you've actually got nowhere to go uh, except for something this small because a regular camera kit won't fit in. Um, but, uh, and, and I'm sure we're gonna be talking about that, but you know, the things are getting better as technology moves along. This is a few years old, but you know, the vast majority of the work that I do is by using um, a rig that's basically, it's a DSLR, but with a fisheye lens on it. And wow. when you're doing it that way, uh, you're getting a lot more resolution. I'm, I'm basically shooting 100 megapixel 360s with that, uh, which is a much higher res than the even the best of the um, one shot cameras. This, this, this new one we'll be chatting a bit more about the from uh, from Insta 360. From Insta, it's yeah. shooting. Yeah, it's 21 megapixels, which is pretty impressive for a one shot camera. Yeah, but it's not 100 megapixels. That's a huge but is gap. It, in, well, I mean, is it? Is it the case of that that camera doesn't produce enough megapixels or is it a case of you are accustomed to more megapixels and therefore you need you feel like you need them when a potential reality is fewer megapixels will be perfectly OK to the average customer? What do you, what do you think? You're both are true. You know, here's here's sort of like a, that it depends answer You're If what you're looking at in a 360 field of view has both near and far content, what happens is that the average viewer is going to be drawn, especially on a mobile device, to pinch zoom. And as a result of that, you're going to need more pixels for everything to stay sharp. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're in a very tight space, you're not likely to do that. You're not going to need, necessarily need to do that. So that's those situations where 20 megapixels might be more than plenty. 
And, you know, you, again, just need to be very aware of what is it that the end viewer is going to experience so that the business or the client that I'm working with is is going to be able to showcase their business properly. Yeah. If you're if you're doing if you're doing 360 real estate type photography and I and this is the one I have, this is the one X2 here, yep. which you're familiar yep. with. I know. Um, but if is that camera viable for doing real estate photography walkthroughs to, you know, for your your average you know, three bedroom, two and a half bath, single family suburban home, you know, in other words, not your rich mansion on the hill in Malibu, California, right? Where for more pedestrian level uses, could I get away with using a 1X2 as my pro camera or do I need to be going the Mark Charette route of DSLR, you know, a mirrorless camera on a proper tripod with the proper head with a nodal point and all that stuff. Hmm. I, I would say that it again, that whole thing of it depends in that from a price mm -hmm. point, because really the time that it takes for shooting a, um, a, a virtual tour using the camera that you've got is a lot less because you don't have to stitch the images. The images will come out already stitched. Yeah. You probably don't have to do, an, you, you won't be able to do a whole, whole lot in terms of you know, color correction and that kind of thing. There's going to be limits to that. Um, so if the purpose is to simply help someone get a, a, a context of place and space and they're really not trying to be wowed by the quality of the image, then it may be enough. And I do know a lot of real estate agents who, um, who, choose not to hire a photographer but because they can do it themselves because as you know using that camera is not that complicated can get away with it some do actually hire photographers and photographers you know who are in the real estate space do do use that kind of a camera but those but you're absolutely right though as soon as you step into a larger home like you know a, a more expensive property where quality is going to matter um you know you know you're really trying to do uh what our buddy Stephen Sharp talks an awful lot about the window pulls. You know, we have to do that. You can't really do a window pull with a with a One X two very well. Whereas with a, um, uh, a DSLR or or mirrorless rig, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends. It depends. What would be your path of, you know, sort of moving to? Uh, I want to learn this stuff. I'm not ready to go to the Mark Charette mm -hmm. level, but I want to get mm -hmm. in at a level where I can actually create stuff that might be client facing. Is, is it mm -hmm. one of these little Insta 360 cameras or is it something a little bit more robust? I would probably start with the one that you've got. That's probably the, the, you know, from the, the one X two is probably the right spot to start because it's definitely proof of concept, plenty good in many cases might actually be good enough for the uh, for the client use, especially if it's just a quick social media feed where it's something that'll be seen, as we know social media, the challenge with is that it's seen and it's gone. You're not going to retain it. It's not something that's going to be your primary ad that you're going to be running all the time, right? It's not yeah. the, mm -hmm. the front facing stuff. So for that reason, I see that as being definitely uh, a viable option. Um, but if you're looking for slightly better, one of the things I would be seriously um, looking at, and I am actually, it, it, it's in my shopping cart now, is the the, the RS1 uh, version of that same camera, which is the newest version with the one inch Leica, uh, Leica lenses and sensor. Right, that's this guy right mm -hmm. here, right? That's exactly it, yeah. So that actually does produce, the biggest thing with this is that you can essentially do a good window pull you won't get the pinch zoom quality because you're limited in terms of the number of pixels you've got all the way around. Mm -hmm. But from a from a f f photographic quality perspective, surprisingly good. And what Insta360 does exceptionally well, and I'm sure you've experienced this with the editing software, is their flow state um, um, stabilization for video. If you are going to be using it for video, their technology outperforms the other players in that space. Yeah. It just does. It's magical. Yeah. And that's, that's basically what you're talking about with flow state. That's the stabilization, right? So that's, that's the right. IS and the way you correct me, I'm, I, I, mm. I'm happy to be corrected. The mm. way that that works is because you have that whole field of view versus in a DSLR or a mirrorless camera with in body image stabilization, it's jogging around that sensor to kind of counteract the movement of the body itself and 360 you have a 360 field of view for it to move around in and pick an object and lock on that object if it needs to to keep the whole frame stable with much more accuracy than you could do with even hardware right 
that's basically it. Yeah, I mean, you know, short of actually getting into the uh, their IP, which I'm not familiar with, of course, because they'll they'll keep that to themselves. Uh, but really, that's where if you think about it's a 21 megapixel frame, but you're getting 6.1K. Well, 6.1K is not 21 megapixels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's far from that. So that gives an awful lot of room for that stabilization, stabilization to, to occur in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. absolutely, that's that's how it works. Yeah, and one, one of the things that I was looking at this new one, this camera here, I was looking at this one for was, you know, in the in the world of wouldn't it be cool if, like wouldn't it be cool to be able to record uh, an in-person interview with one camera and then do multiple camera angles. So put this camera in front of two people, have that conversation, you know, say, or maybe even more, maybe three people, then have myself, my audio, the guest audio and guest two audios kept or captured separately. Mm -hmm. So now I have three separate distinct audio sources and a 360 bubble that then I could in post go into mm -hmm. and create a Frederick shot, a guest one shot, guest two shot, and an everybody shot and just do mm -hmm. a multicam edit and put it all mm -hmm. together in the computer. Meanwhile, I've had one camera there. And I'm able to Absolutely. do, yeah, I wonder if, is that viable? Is that a viable workflow? And what, especially with this, with this Insta360 uh, One RS, I feel like with a one inch sensor, I should be able to do something like that. Right? What, what do you think? I, I agree. In fact, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm looking at getting it is that currently, um, as you know, um, you know, and thanks to you with regards to that, like that, that Panasonic GH4. We're currently using that along with a, a G85 and yeah. a couple of Canons for when I'm doing interviews in my studio just behind us over here. And for it's not a big studio; it's just a converted living room. And in a situation like that, uh, that camera could possibly be good enough because you got to remember that in the world of interviews, as you know, resolution is not everything. Audio is probably more important. Oh, and as long you know, it's so. Exactly. So, so for that reason, as long as you have the people in frame, the and you're getting context to story, the beauty is is you and where you're absolutely right is you don't miss a shot. You can go back and re reframe it. The one thing I would be very cautious about is making sure that you don't put the uh, the, um, the the stitch line on somebody's head. Just please don't do that with one oh, of those cameras. <laughs> right, yeah, because you'll get them moving around and doing all that. Yeah, or the it'll reveal this the stitch line. Yeah, that's that, right, that, that's, that's right. Bad. Yeah, that's, that's right. interesting. That's interesting where things are going though. I mean, to have, to be able to do a multi-person sh shoot like that, essentially with, uh, I'm assuming with a one-in sensor with really good quality, especially if you're only needing 1080, Right, <laughs> so that's exactly I mean, you can it. punch in all day long and have all these different. And I, the way I was thinking, maybe I'm overthinking it. I was thinking mm -hmm. that I would have, say, I recorded a 15 or 20 minute interview, so I have that ball of content, and then I would go in and harvest the Frederick shot and make a 15 minute video of just me, another 15 mm -hmm. vid minute video of just Mark, and then another mm -hmm. one of us together. So now I have three mm -hmm. dis exported three distinct regular 1080 video files, then then I bring yeah. into Final Cut or Premiere or, or DaVinci as a multicam mm -hmm. edit, and then switch between the cameras. Boom. Absolutely. Done. That's exactly done. it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All done with, and most importantly, done with one camera. With and one. In, my, yes, in a right. bag. It could be in a little little fanny pack, right? The whole yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. For once, your audio gear your ba bag will be far larger than your camera bag. That's I mean, right. That's, that, that's a pretty big change. Yeah, so, that's, that's interesting. And I've been playing with, I think you're you're familiar with these mics, the mm -hmm. um, the clip mic. Pro, I think it's the Clip Mic Pro Two. Are you familiar with those mm -hmm. mics? Not that one, no. Is there, it similar I'll to send the you a, No, no. I'll send you a link mm -hmm. to them. Basically, they're mics that are designed to plug into um, a phone or a tablet. So right. you plug them directly in, but you know that's nothing new. The cool thing about mm -hmm. them is they there's this app that they come with that allows one device to act as a master. So in other words, I could give you the mic, you could plug it into your phone, and you download their app, you're good. Give it to another right. person, they download the app, they're good. From my little iPad mini here, I can run mm -hmm. their software and see both of those mics and oh, the wow. levels for both nice. mics and hit record and stop and, and control your volume on each one of those mics remotely, right? So now- Just give me a minute. I've got to go to Amazon <laughs> buy one of those now. <laughs> They're 300 bucks, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're but spending isn't that my cool? money. Right. Yeah, isn't that absolutely. cool to be able to yeah. do that? Oh, that's great. That is great. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the, you know, I, I was telling Troy Miller, uh, our mutual friend about that. Mm -hmm. And, um, he brought up the I, I think it was Troy, but he brought up. Yeah, but now you got to make sure everyone's phones are charged and all that, you know, so it opens up that ball of wax if you're using other people's phones. But you could solve that by buying, you know, cheap phones or a cheap yeah. little iPod or something for that's dedicated for use with for audio and be done. That's with. right. You could, you know, buying you know, three short, you know, inexpensive smartphones or four inexpensive smartphones would still be cheaper and smaller if you think about it compared to all the rest of the normal gear you'd be normally buying. Oh, you know, my God. Uh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. the same. That's it is. Right. I mean, because you could have your whole kit literally in a, in a bag, you know, with yeah. your other camera gear, with your 360 camera, with your drones, with your, your mirrorless cameras, all in one little reasonably sized bag and be able to produce. I mean, if you think about it, with that kit, you can mm. produce your establishing audio, beautiful shots. You can That's do right. your medium shots. You can do your still photography. You can do your interview and capture pristine audio from it. You can do all those things and end up with an SD card that has everything on it. And you just sit down at your MacBook or whatever and edit it and be done at the end that's of the day right. and create that's right. something that's beyond what they could have created in movie, you know, or in, in television just a couple of years ago. And one of the things I want to bring up that's actually really important to not forget with regards to this whole 360 world is notice that we didn't say 3D. This is still yeah. 2D. This right. is still 2D. And this is one of the things that gets people a lot of, a lot of confusion in this space is they think of 3D video and forget about the complexity of 3D and how much extra work you'd be creating and for how much extra value. You know, the immersiveness is less important than the quality of the audio and the story, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really, what I think, what has to be remembered because, like, for example, Canon now has, as you probably have seen, a, uh, a VR lens. They're the first to come up uh, with a, uh, a um, an RF-mounted VR lens, which fits on the RF series uh, or the R series cameras. Um, and it does a great job in 180, but it still doesn't do 360. It's still, it's, it's VR 180, hmm. and so for 3D. So that's one of the things that's beautiful about the cost point of this, the, the, uh, the Insta 360 One RS is that it really does, uh, it, it really does work well in a 2D environment, which is how most people are still going to be consuming content for many years to come. That's right. That's right. No, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, you know, and you and I spoke a while ago about mm -hmm. just the, the trajectory of 360 video, because back in the day, mm -hmm. you, you remember QuickTime VR, mm -hmm. remember that world where, mm -hmm. oh, everything's going to be yeah. video, and I mean, yep. would, and QuickTime VR, I think, I think was based on still photos, so they had the, the two modalities, the 360 where you could look around and see stuff, kind of like you can now, but then also the 360 product photography, or object right. photography, where you could drag right. on, like you see on car sites today, exactly. you know, you can look at the car from almost any angle, um, mm -hmm. but that fizzled out, right? That, mm -hmm. that it, I feel like that was like the hot thing, kind of like HDR, and then mm -hmm. not so yeah. much anymore. Like, I well, it's interesting that you say that because I, I've actually shot pro probably, I don't know, 50, 60 different client products for that pro for the product 360 rotation space. Mm -hmm. I think that where the challenge has to come from, and I've experienced that from with, with my clients, is that the, their, their, their belief is, and, and I like to say this always, as soon as someone asks for a quote and they actually use the word just, like, I just want to quote four, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, their, their expectation is that it's going to be not too expensive. But they forget that to, to produce a really good quality 360 photo of a product, you've got to shoot anywhere between 90 to 180 frames all the way around that product. You know, and every all parts of that product has to look good. So yeah. from a production cost, I think what's happened is that the expectations are, are out of alignment with people's um, expectations of cost because it, it does take a lot of time to actually to do properly um and it's you know lighting is still going to be an issue it's actually more complicated than it ever was before when it comes to you know when it comes to uh, uh sh shooting a, a still frame of a product um in fact actually one of the things that i found quite fascinating you probably see there's a, i've got a pair of headphones with a, um, a mannequin head behind me over here well that was actually because i was doing sunglasses and i actually have the full mannequin and i was doing shirts polo shirts in 360 and yeah. 
you got to iron the thing all the way around. It's not just the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? imagine that. Yeah, it's like double the you, work. <laughs> it's like doesn't matter where you look. It's even in the creases in the armpits matter. Like everything matters. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like it's so it's not just taking one photo. It's 180 photos, and every one of them has to look good before you actually start working on the file. So, so. Uh, how are you? How are you feeling as someone operating in this space um, about the? You know the rumored coming of Apple's AR glasses and 360, and you know Facebook's doubling down on the you know the whole metaverse and all that stuff. Is mm -hmm. does that stuff? Is it as a as a, vid, a 360 you know photographer? Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. those directions do they excite you or do they worry you? They do both. Mm -hmm. They do both because uh, they're exciting because of the potential that it creates for those people who are really interested in in the future of of basically what the metaverse has as a promise but you got to keep in mind that we're still really in the infancy of of content creation in the in the world of of um uh, of 360. so i think we haven't explored everything that could be done with that and from we we've got to be very practical in terms of where it's going to be used the most and until we've actually gone past that line of practicality i think it's not it's not going to really take off as a product it, it will actually be interesting more for the gamers mm -hmm. or for the enthusiasts and the early adopters those are the people as per usual just like if you think of back in the days when flat screen tvs first came out i think you and i are both old enough to remember when that happened mm -hmm. it was like 10 10 for fifteen thousand dollars for a flat screen tv that was maybe a 27 inch it was just yeah. wow right yep. Yep. and now I can go down to the local Aldi shop and buy 70 inch for $600. Like it's just yeah. gone, come down, right? Yep. And it's become sort of mainstream. Whereas yeah. with the world of 360 uh, in, in the, as a production product for the metaverse, uh, the big challenge has to do with now we've got this other issue, which is data collection. So what are they going to do with all this extra data? Right, we have to think about that. So, if it's being managed, which I tend to lean more towards Apple as a company that has a little bit more respect. You know, they're not perfect by any means, but maybe more respect when it comes to to to, uh, to privacy and those types of things. Um, but I, you know, I'm a little concerned about where where Facebook is going with it. Um, until they made a really clear promise of data protection, it's still one of those things where um, you know. I'm I'm cautious. I'm cautious. Yeah, I mean, you could see a day in the, you know, in a decade or so mm -hmm. when Zuckerberg is sitting before the this you know the Senate hearing committee again answering questions mm -hmm. about why in 2024 did you scoop up all, everyone's 360 data and sell it. <laughs> 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 this is it, you know, we're, and, and it's not that hard to to draw the line between those two points. It really isn't, right? Yeah, yeah. And my, you know, the tours that I shoot, my clients often forget that it's not video because of the fact that I add auto rotation to it. So they immediately they think, and is it, they actually think it's live. And I'm going, no, it's not live. These are photos. They were taken, you know, sometimes three, four, five years ago. Yes, they have motion, but it's not real. It's not live. Yeah, you know? and that's the big yeah. difference. There, there's so much there, man. So, you mm. know, what what do you think is next? Like, obviously, mm. I mean, if you look at the trajectory of where these little handheld consumer 360 cameras have gone, it's resolution, right? Because we started with super low resolution, which was okay, nice proof of concept. You could do some cool stuff to to kind of where these guys are, the One X2, which is, I can do a lot of cool stuff with that, you know, and the software gets better and better in terms of the, the special effects I create. And then now we've got this this new one, the, you know, that RS, which with yeah. the, has one inch sensors in it. So I'm guessing what's next, you know, mm. micro, is micro four thirds bigger than one inch? I don't know, whatever the next. It, it is, it is. Yeah. yeah, so the next larger might one might be micro four thirds sensors in these, I don't know. Yeah, I think that there's a couple of things that need to happen for there to be a, a major leap. A friend of mine, Mark, uh, John Workington, has mentioned this before, where the idea of imagine where a sensor was more like a bug eye, right? Where it's actually where the sensor itself was spherical. If you could get to that point where you've developed that kind of technology, then you're going to end up with something truly innovative that's going to change the game once again. But I think that really the uh, the, the, the more short-term innovations are going to be more having to do with the quality of the software 
the um, better quality compression to be able to deliver the data at a uh, at a rate that the consumer can see it at a higher at a high enough res resolution for them to enjoy it and to benefit from it. Those are the things that I think are going to matter the most by far. Um, so there's 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 some, and it's also the other thing too is the convergence of of technologies. Something that's been sort of overlooked that um, uh, uh, Google has recently announced. I don't know if you've heard about this, but they recently announced a new technology whereby they're going to be converging the combination of um, satellite view along with drone footage, sometimes 360, down to Google Street View and make it a continuous experience. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. So so that particular form of technology, that kind of immersion, because what you're doing at that point is you're using existing content and existing technologies, but repurposing it in a more interesting way. Again, proper innovation. And that really, I think, is more likely to occur between now and the world of really highly consumed 3D. I think yeah. that's that's really where it's going. So, yeah. yeah. And all the, hmm. the, the different things that we didn't know we needed, but now can't live without like, um, like this one I'm looking at right now on the screen is horizon mm -hmm. lock 360 horizon lock. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it which seems it. magical for the camera to be able to just say, hey, here's the horizon. And that's it. I don't care what you do, human. The horizon is going to remain level, whether you're in a plane doing loop to loops or in a motorcycle. The horizon stays the same. That, that's exactly that for me is that's almost like what technology is supposed to be. Right. It's supposed to make things that were traditionally hard, like, oh, I shot this video on the motorcycle. Now I got to go and meticulously make sure the horizon is level and keyframe and do all that. No, it just does mm -hmm. it. And it's baked into the video and it's right. And of course it's right, right? That's the way it should That's be. Right. So. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree. Because those are those innovative steps that are small enough for us to actually use and go, I benefit from this. You're saving time as a producer, as a content creator. The consumer is able to enjoy it. Uh, the businesses are prepared to pay for it because it's not costing them a bomb more to actually get it done. Mm -hmm. So incrementally, it makes sense to make those steps. Um, whereas, you know, I think that the promise maybe 15 years ago when when 360 first was becoming a, a concept that people understood because primarily because of Google Street View, it was uh, it was probably projected incorrectly in terms of what it was going to look like by now. And I think that we're seeing some corrections for that now more than anything else. And that's and these small incremental steps are showing that. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, it, it, it's there's small incremental steps, but it, they're also large steps, right? Because there's a, yeah. if you look at it, you know, if you zoom out and look at where we were, where we are to now, oh. where we are today. And, you know, I look at these cameras and I'm thinking, wow, you know what? With a with a camera, it, it, like, where are things going? Is this the shape of the cameras of the future? Right. Are yeah, mirrorless I, cameras going away as these get better and better and all these, you know, crazy features that they have? Will this replace my mirrorless camera? I don't know. I, I actually think that's quite possible. Think of the modular design of that camera. One of the things that's uh, I, I was thinking about is how that particular camera has a one inch sensor. I believe it's F2.8. I'm not really sure, but I believe it is or F2. But imagine where you can have a different you'll have a third lens on top instead of two lenses three lenses adding an yeah. extra sensor in there is not the end of the world and doesn't really change the shape that much that's right then uh, yeah. all right now imagine where because you won't be able to add a fourth lens but you'll still get a better capture because now you're spreading the pixels across more more points on those lenses what does that mean you can actually have you know maybe 36 48 you know 50 you know, uh, you know higher resolution but you'll also be able to do other things such as being able to to, to have better quality pinch zoom, right? Because now what if you actually had a zoom lens on the inside, mm. right? Where you can actually zoom in and take extra high, higher resolution, basically it's not even so much higher resolution, but more photos zoomed in, therefore when stitched together after the fact, actually produce a more high res image. So yeah. those are forms of technology where I can see they're going to step up. So the idea of the modularized way that Insta360 is going, I think is really, really fascinating because what they're saying is we'd like for you to basically get sticky with our, 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 our program. It's no different than changing lenses on a DSLR, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's really smart. The modular approach, because instead of building a one size fits all product and 
you know, limiting yourself to a small segment segment of the audience that needs that particular use case, why not build it modularly so that, mm -hmm. you know, people that have different varying use cases can pick and choose the bits that they need. Plus it opens up the market for the manufacturer to create all these different things based on where the industry goes. Right. That's exactly it. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember right. I think you're using a Panasonic box camera. Is that correct right now? I am. Their... Yeah, I'm actually wow. shooting on it. This camera that I'm on right now is a Panasonic box camera. Well, just imagine where that box camera gets ultra thin. Right. All right. Now you sandwich one behind the other. Now put one on top and none of them are in each other's field of view because of the way they were built and they still have the same quality sensor. What have you got? Yeah. Well, I mean, at that, at that, you got a big thing at that point, right? Regardless of if they're smaller, but I'm like that back to our discussion about the right tool for the right job. Right. So mm -hmm. sure. That's probably going to be great. A, a, a rig like that would be great for cinema type uses where you're shooting a 360 cinema experience mm -hmm. when you get to play Iron Man or something inside of it. Uh, but for the average person that's hiking and riding a motorcycle or, you know, just wants those more pedestrian level things, then... Mm -hmm. You know, having 20 pounds of kit for one shot, not so good. <laughs> That's exactly it. And this is why I'm yeah. thinking that eventually they'll simply be able to find ways to make them far thinner, therefore far lighter, because there's just less yeah. metal and parts in them. And that's, that's, in, but it's, it's, it, the, the trick is to get the sensor size and the sensor's capability of gathering light, you know, qual high enough quality. So that's really what it is to me. So, but but this whole modularized approach. I mean, I'm glad you're bringing that up because that's really what I think is particularly fascinating with their their model. You know, you look at, for example, with no disrespect to the folks at Ricoh, because they, you know, with their Theta line, they've done a great job of popularizing and, and making it easy to use in a in a small package. But they didn't really modularize much of anything. You can't change the battery in it, even the RAM, you know, your, your storage, your memory card is built in and it's not sealed in. Some people have actually tried tearing them apart to see if they could put a bigger card in there and that kind of mm, thing. Wow. Uh, you know, so it's those that idea of, of uh, it's kind of the difference between Apple and smartphones where a lot of, you know, the, uh, the, the Android world where you do have still, in some cases, the capacity to put a micro SD card into it. It's that yeah. kind of difference in thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So exciting. So much cool stuff to play with. Not enough yep. time to play with it. In, right? so. <laughs> you know, it comes down to in our in, in the world. Of, this is where the commercial side of it really makes a lot of sense. And the real estate industry has done a very, very good job of popularizing these cameras for from a from a, uh, a, a the Matterport is the, the company that comes to my mind where they've done a really good job of with their kit and they're developing new ways of using their technologies you can now one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that matterport is also now accepting imagery shot with 360 cameras and even phones that they can mm. import into their technology so they're not just they're not a a hardware company so much as they are a software platform so so there's there's shifts in that space and i think the software side of it i think is very very important if not and sometimes more important because you can do so much yeah, no, for sure. And if I was a Matterport and I had created this giant, expensive, hard to get, you know, single use camera and then companies that are funded and hungry like Insta360 come along with these smaller cameras that can do pretty much what the big ones can do, but I'll yep. also allow you to have fun and carry it in your camera bag. Sure. My shift would be to software. too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably Makes software as a service subscription based. Right. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Very, very yeah. true. So that, that, that to me is really where the like, so, so, you know, to go back to your question of you now, where is it going? I think yeah. the software is in, in, in innovations in that space is going to be as important, um, if not more important than the hardware. I mean, you do want always new hardware innovations to go, come along with it because you one hand washes the other. You know, you get a ratcheting effect between the two. But really, you know, you know, companies like 3D Vista that, you know, like what I'm going to be doing this afternoon or morning and afternoon is working with another guy that we're going to be doing some green screen testing for 3D Vista to, for implementation for a client that I'm doing a quote for. So that, that kind of technology and usage already exists is how do we make it easier? How do we make it faster? How do we make it so more affordable for the client to say yes? And those are the things that I think is really where more of the push needs to come from. Love it. Love it. Well, speaking of the future and what's next, what's next for Mark mm -hmm. Charette? 
Next is, uh, well, actually, I'll, I've been doing a lot of different things because, as you can imagine, what the pandemic did to a lot of us is it made us have to rethink our business model. So I've actually um, had to do a bit of the shifting because during that period of time, I wasn't able to actually get onto premises and shoot because, obviously, if they're closed, um, you can't go on site. So I've moved a little bit more towards the audio side. So you know, I'm, I'm in the process of rebranding my business to Central Coast Digital Media from being uh, so that the WorkPix 360 model is still active, but it's going to be more a product within the brand. And as a result, what I'm now doing is offering uh, services with converting my living room into a YouTube studio. So I'm recording a, a podcast I have been for the past year, which is I know you're familiar with because mm -hmm. of your wonderful uh, participation in supporting us with uh, the, 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 um, the Culture of Things podcast, which is a business podcast. So I'm doing that. But I'm also doing audio engineering for audiobooks now too. So doing a lot of different things that each one of these skill sets is actually helping me hone in the primary 360 space too. You know, one hand does wash the other again there. So that's what's up. To, that's what's um, up and coming for me. So I'm spending a lot more time uh, in front of DaVinci Resolve and doing a lot of video editing now too. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, I'll tell you, I've been saying this for years, probably over a decade now. Um, we are not photographers. We are multimediographers. So we're, That's we're content okay. creators. So yeah, you're mm -hmm. and you're a great example of it. You're doing 360 photography. Now you're adding audio, your, you know, data, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. messing with all kinds of data. And it depends mm -hmm. on what the end result you need is, is what superpowers you bring to bear. Right. It's it's exactly it. You know, the whole when I went through that whole question of how do I rebrand, you know, I was thinking about what is it that I actually pr produce in the end. And although, yes, some of my clients buy prints like the ones that are behind me, but that kind of thing, it's almost always digital media. Everyone, so I thought, where am I? What do I do? Let's make it simple. So Central Coast Digital Media, there's people, you know, and, and I think that that's a way that of the future now is making sure you're absolutely clear on what you offer in your business but make it broad enough that people are still reaching out to you and because you might actually be able to do more than just that one thing that you specialize in that's right that's right mm -hmm. well let's leave it right there mark charette um people want to mm -hmm. get in contact with you hire you to do mm -hmm. you know 360 type photography projects where should they go yes uh, well actually the new website for central coast digital media is just about to launch it's actually live but i'm just using a, an adobe um, site but i've had my my web developer do it in wordpress it's going to be completely ready to go so um, info at central coast digital media .com .au, or the other place as you know i'm a big fan of is catch me on LinkedIn. That's where, yeah. you know, if you actually look me up, if you just put in Mark Charette, Mark with a C, Charette, C-H-A-R-E-T-T-E, -E, you'll find me very, very easily I, um, in, in there. And uh, that's a good place for me to have conversations with people. Yeah, you're pretty prol prolific on the, uh, yeah. the LinkedIn over on there. LinkedIn. So good again yep. multimediographer so you're all over the place you gotta yeah. you gotta be that you gotta be that octopus with different brains in each tentacle right <laughs> so. I, I like that thinking yes <laughs> it's true yeah. Yeah. all right man well thank you i appreciate you doing this this, is a, this has been a good catch up we gotta make this a habit we gotta do more yep. catch ups because yep. you and i are in sync definitely on this where this stuff is going i'm excited Absolutely. and terrified uh and <laughs> You know, there's a time deficit and, you know, of course, a money deficit as well. So you got to synthesize all these things together to make the right decision for you. That, absolutely. Absolutely. No, but, and, I, and I really appreciate what you do with the program and with the This Week in Photo community. It's one of those things that's it's actually been fabulous for all of us who are really strong participants in it. It's you know brought some sanity to all this craziness we've had over the past few years. So thank you very much for what you do. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it goes both ways, my friend. So the community keeps yeah. me sane and grounded right. as well. So, yeah, yeah very super. cool. All right, Alrighty. my friend, we'll leave it. We'll leave it right there. Have a good rest of your day. I know it's bright and early over there. So yeah, go out, go out and do a jog or something. Make me take That's advantage right. <laughs> of this long day that you have ahead of you. <laughs> if it wasn't so bloody raining outside, we were having we've had storms all week. I would be, but yeah. So I, I'm just gonna prepare the studio for the screen shoot. That's what I'll be working on next. I hear you. Yep. All right. Cool. cool. All, right. all right. Take Super. care, Mark. Thanks, Frederick. This is Twitter.